The Tomahawk is probably and arguably the most known and sold motherboard MSI has to offer. And being an entry level one, it's really one of those products MSI cannot mess up. And today we are reviewing the highly anticipated Mac B550 Tomahawk from MSI, an aggressive sub $200 motherboard aiming to play the most demanding gaming out there. And fun fact for you, Tomahawk in French means very small tom. Oh, sir, sir, excuse me, you have a Tomahawk, huh? <laughs> tomahawk! W why, yes, absolutely, I have a, a Tomahawk, yes, indeed, a Tomahawk. <laughs> tomahawk! <laughs> MSI's mag is all about budget gaming and the Tomahawk is its star. It's meant to bring you the best possible gaming centric performances to a market bottom dollar. And the B550 chipset is definitely a challenge to MSI. It introduces PCIe 4.0, which requires unreductible cost and um, at the same time, it's only 180 bucks, uh, almost half of the cost of its X570 version, the, the X570 Tomahawk. And still, MSI would like us to believe that this motherboard gives about the same performances of that much more expensive sibling. And the only way it can do so is by uh, uh, imposing an absolute control on the components present on that motherboard. And, and to be clear, it's all about VRM and heat efficiency. Everything else on this board is a second class citizen. Now, starting with the obvious, we are dealing with a six PCB layered ATX motherboard and right there having a six layer PCB means a perfect PCIe 4.0 support, a stronger signal isolation, a better VRM heat dissipation. So in terms of fundamentals, MSI started very, very strongly with giving us what we need to have a properly working PCIe 4.0 enabled board. Big kudos to MSI for this. CPU socket wise, it is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting both third and fourth generation of Ryzen CPU. In other words, PCIe 4.0 only CPUs, which is important because this is where our board PCIe 4 abilities will come from. And the PCIe 4 standard is a big deal because it gives us double the, the bandwidth available on PCIe 3, having a direct impact on, on a lot of our performance centric components such as the M.2 solid state drive or even our video card. VRM wise, well, this is where the Tomahawk strikes. We have 1260 amps power stages organized in six parallel phases, five of which are CPU centric. First, having parallel phases is something that usually ACES does and I'm not surprised because this is a more affordable way to deliver a lot of power uh, on your processor even though it's arguably less uh, agile than direct phases but it remains 600 amps of CPU centric power that is more than you'll ever need to run and even overclock any kind of Ryzen available processors today, including the gigantic gargantuous 16 core 3950X. But having 600 amps spread over these few power stages results in a higher heat footprint. And to control it, MSI came up with the same solution they used on their much more expensive X570 unified board, a massive single heat shield cover. From power stages to back IOs, there is nothing here but condensed steel. And the whole thing topped by this never ending radiating roof. And no RGB nonsense, just pure power utility. I absolutely love it. Additionally, both of our heat shields have a double thermal padded contact design, which provide individual heat dissipation for both our chokes and power stages. Now, both of these features topped with a six PCB layer um, gives us one of the most efficient CPU power delivery that the industry can produce today. And this is what MSI needed to get right in order to really make this board a gamer centric board, a, 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 a CPU screamer, so a huge uh, engineering kudos to MSI for this. Memory wise, the Mac B550 Tomahawk supports up to 128 GB of DDR4 RAM in a dual channel configuration, clocking up to an unprecedented 5.1 GHz, but, and this is a sizable but, you can only achieve this kind of speed on a single RAM stick. If you put a second one on a second channel, it drops all the way down to 4 GHz, and if you put a third one, it's 3.8, and if you populate the four sticks, you cannot overclock beyond uh, 3.6 gigahertz, which is a more normal uh, standard or speed uh, for the day. So 
a little bit, I wouldn't say scammy, but not completely transparent here coming from MSI. Staying in the memory, we have two M.2 solid state drive sticks with different bandwidth standard. The closest one to our processor can run up to PCIe 4.0 standard, meaning data swaps up to 64 gigabit per second. Our second M.2 solid state drive fits directly from our B550 chipset, therefore is capped at PCIe 3.0 standard and swaps data to half the speeds, meaning 32 gigabit per second. In both cases, our sticks can get really hot very quickly. Unfortunately, we have this beautiful long and thick heat shield, which greatly helps in keeping them cool at all time. Export-wise, we have four PCIe exports, two bachelors and two 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU can run up to 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes. Therefore, this is where you definitely want your video card installed for optimal performances hence the metallic reinforcement. Our second 16 slot is capped at only four lanes at PCIe 3.0 standard. So definitely not here to support a video card. It will bottleneck you anything you'll put in there. So yeah, first slot, not the second. Now taking a closer look to our B550 chipset, since our CPU takes care of the PCIe 4.0 heavy lifting to feed our most performant components, the chipset can comfortably remain at, at PCIe 3 standard without slowing down your build. But most importantly, it translates in a much cooler 6 watt chipset, so no more need for a fan to keep it cool as seen on its X570 counterpart. So as a result, we have PCIe 4.0 enabled components thanks to the processor and still a very cool chipset which helps to keep manufacturing costs down and that I think is the secret success uh, ingredient of all of the B550 powered motherboards. Back IO wise, first let me note the presence of a padded back IO plate which is rather a premium and welcome feature at that price range. And starting from the left we have a CPU flashback button for a CPU less BIOS recovery or update button which again not usually here at that price range. A PS2 connector, which I really don't enjoy seeing in anything else but hardcore overclocker. And obviously the B550 Tomahawk, even though can overclock, is not one of those. And so, yeah, I, I'm... I'm sure I'm gonna get comments and everything. I'm not a fan of it. I think we could have saved a few cents. And, and I'd, or I'd rather see more USB second generation plugs instead of it. Next, we have two USB second generation plugs. Our display outputs for Vega integrated graphic, including an HDMI 1.4, which really surprised me because looking at the current AMD integrated graphics, Vega integrated graphics, and more importantly, the incoming ones, which will all be able to run 4K at anywhere between 40 and 60 frames per second, it really is not acceptable. It will physically limit your performances. And that's where I, I think MSI really missed an easy win because it really doesn't cost that much more to put an HDMI 2.0 instead of a HDMI 1.4, which anyway should not be on any motherboard produced after 2018. So big no-no for MSI to this. No, no. Next, we have two 10 gigabit USB plugs, including a Type-C, a 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is great, but we have a second one gigabit LAN, which makes absolutely no sense. I mean, this is not a workstation motherboard. Why would you need two LANs on this thing? It really feels like what I was talking in the beginning of this review, like sometimes MSI is putting those random features, which is really all about in-your-face marketing more than something you'll use into gaming. And my choice, instead of this PS2 and this gigabit LAN, put a Wi-Fi adapter. Put the Wi-Fi adapter. It's something that everybody always is happy to see, would have added value to this motherboard. And, and yeah, I think this is a big missed opportunity personally. Thankfully, we got our A channel ALC1220 audio codec from Realtek, which despite being a mid-range codec, heavily benefit from the six PCB layering, uh, having both its left and right audio channel traced on individual PCB layers and protecting it uh, from interference, static interferences, which a lot of you uh, experience on non-grounded 
on-premises and add to that a generous five capacitors and you have a really premium audio experience. I mean, I mean the best you can hope at that price range uh, in both uh, playing, gaming and recording. So looking at the overall back IO, it's a bit messy. I really feel it's a bit messy. On one hand, we have really must have and really good features such as as a back, uh, uh, the, the flashback bias button and a really good quality audio but on the other uh, we got this ps2 connector and this LAN, this second LAN, which really serves no purpose and it just feels like msi missed an opportunity here on to our front panel connectors we have two second generation plugs great for monitoring, a 5 gigabit third generation plug and a 10 gigabit type C front panel connector, which, which I'll be honest here is pure luxury and something which uh, was never really introduced on B level series. So big kudos to MSI for this. Cooling wise, we have eight PWM fans, including a single dedicated water pump. And obviously this is more than you'll ever need to keep a solid airflow into your build. And I'm not just looking to to always criticize, but I cannot shake the feeling that that MSI has again missed one of the essential of this board because we did not need eight PWM fans. What we need, what we needed was five hybrid fans. I've seen as seen on our boards, uh, which can all individually support anything from fans, uh, uh, water pumps, or even water flow sensors, and which would have given this board a much greater agility and enthusiast appeal than a PWM fans connector, which frankly on a single GPU or a single loop water cooling system is, is just useless. Troubleshooting wise, we get our easy debugger to guide us through the booting process, which is what I expected to see on a PCIe 4.0 enabled board. We also do have the flashback BIOS button uh, on our back IOS, so we are in the clear on this one. Finally, this would not be a gamer's motherboard without the usual RGB madness, which makes our lives so much more meaningful. Starting with a single RGB strip hidden under our chipset heat shield and four RGB connectors scattered all over our board, including two addressable ones and in short if your streaming career never really took off at least you still have your motherboard uh, to light the entire facade of a casino in conclusion at 180 dollars before taxes the msi mag b550 tomahawk is about half the cost of its x570 counterpart and i'll start by saying that this was definitely a very confusing product to review because on one hand you really start on really strong fundamentals and on the other you have a mess of, of weird non-essential features and, and, and missed opportunities. But even when you talk about those missed opportunities, aggregate them all together. They don't come close to, to, to outweigh the strong foundations of this motherboard. I mean, uh, we have this amazing VRM. 60 amps power stages, a six layered PCB, and absolutely top of the industry cooling abilities. And again, I'll go back on this uh, uh, VRM uh, main block, which again, we saw on Unify boards, but just absolutely amazing. I love it and I really hope to see much more of it on, on other products. And so at the sub $200 market segment, it is probably the best performing motherboard I have been given to toy with and it absolutely blows away its natural competition um, uh, in terms of CPU power in CPU centric abilities and either the B550 Tough Gaming from Asus or the B550 Aorus Elite uh, not by much but it does and so if you are looking for this $200 gamer only motherboard there is really nowhere else your money wants to be easy choice.